We'll call the meeting to order. Thank you all uh, for being here. Welcome to the Thursday, November 16 meeting of the Economic Development Authority for the city of Lynchburg. Start with a roll call. Sean Hewitt. Is absent. Patricia Mosby. Here. George Ann Sneed. Here. Kimberly Sorensen. Here. Don Stone. Here. Richard Tugman. Absent. Sackett Wood. Here. Right. First order of business or second order after roll call will be approval of minutes for our October 19th meeting. Those I mean, minutes are uh, in your packet. We have any comments before I accept a motion to approve. I will accept a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I make the motion. Second. All in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. It's approved. Uh, number three, flowers incentive. Yeah. So, uh, flowers, I think the performance agreement is under Lynchburg Organic Bakery, but their performance agreement with you all was up in July. And so I followed up with them because I knew that the um, the capital investment had been made and jobs have, have been done. So I followed up with the home office um, and they sent me their their final report to um, have you all consider releasing the incumbents for them. It was three hundred and fifty thousand. They were adding fifteen new jobs to a baseline of 159 and um i hope sometime in the future that we could go down and tour the facility because i'll remind you all that they had been coming here flying into lynchburg before this occurred to look at shutting that bakery down and that bakery has been there for over 50 years mm -hmm. um and um, they, you know, by chance gave, gave, gave us a call to which we immediately, I grabbed Tom and we went on site right then. And, um, and, and they were, when, the, when they came into town, they were really impressed with downtown. They were impressed with the direction that they thought the city you know, it was going in, and so they completely redid that bakery. So that bakery, the equipment that is in the bakery, um, they actually did some of the designing of the equipment themselves and went to AMF to produce it for them. Mm -hmm. So you you took the existing structure there and had to completely, um, you know, renovate it mm -hmm. to do organic baking. So Dave's Killebred is a brand that mm -hmm. they've purchased. It's one of the number one selling organic, a real win for them because they were originally, you know, Sunbeam mm -hmm. um, Bakery back at Kern's Bakery back in the day. They call the white bread, they make cake. Um, you know, it was a cake bakery, meaning that that's, it made the white bread and some sort of dinner roll that just flies off the shelf during I know a lot more about bread. It smells better than yeah. the current. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, just lift you to another planet. But anyway, <laughs> it, it is absolutely amazing. And not only did they do that, but they bought the buildings across the street and they've renovated all those to become their office. Um, so they're a great neighbor. Um, I've had the Bedford Avenue uh, group, Daryl Calfee and John Fees meet with the general manager there um, to talk about, they had talked to me about the fact that the neighborhood that is right there um, next to them on Bedford Avenue, a lot of people can walk to work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, it, it is a really, uh, it's a great um, success story. And, and Flowers, period, they have a facility in uh, Norfolk, I think, where they actually have um, a career center in the apartments um, that are next to their facility. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like they've really taken a step further to become like an employer of choice in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So very innovative on that side. So they actually ended up, which is usually often the case, um, spending a lot more. 25 million was the benchmark. They spent almost 33 million on the on the site. So at some point in time, I'll reach out to them for us to go through there because I, I definitely think it is a um, it is really really uh, fascinating. So I bring to you all um, also the the accounts we're saying, Mark, yeah, this is over in July. And you can get this move back. So um, I wanted to bring it to you all today for you to to recommend that you take a vote to um, come with the funds and release the incentive payment as they have met the performance agreement. Wonderful. Anybody having questions? Great success. So yeah, mm -hmm. just shows you the diversity of the businesses that we that we have here mm -hmm. right and all of them have their own history mm -hmm. and their own story about how they have um gotten employees and all that they um I think their average salary i mean the other thing if you all remember correctly is they started this you know right before the pandemic i mean you know before all of that but they can have to, when they had to completely renovate that this is, shows me the true mark of it company and they had to completely renovate that building they kept all the employees on the pay. I have well, some people whose spouses work there. It's just unbelievable. Wow. I mean you know that's kind of stuff makes me mm -hmm. cry. Yeah and you know that committed to and and I really think that that people that work there have an incredibly long I don't long tenure. Good. So flowers is met. Yeah. Uh, all performance criteria for the full three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And we just need a motion to release that encumbrance for three hundred fifty thousand. Yes. Motion to do so. Second. So we have a motion to release full encumbrance. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Ivy Creek Forestry. Clayton. Good morning, everyone. Um, Lane, let me turn you up. It was just so loud it scared me. Oh, sure. No, <laughs> we had to rig all this up at 5 30 yesterday because none of this worked. Jeez. You want to hear a great podcast on how, how I built this, how they built this? Dave's Killer Bread is an unbelievable story. Oh, no. It really is. Um, it absolutely, yeah, it absolutely is. All right, Clayton, speak, right, but not. You? Oh boy. Can you hear me? That's as loud as I can go. All right. I'll try to speak uh, clearly for you all. Um, after our property committee review of the uh, proposal from Hearst uh, Landworks with the Urban Forester, uh, we worked to reduce the scope. Um, the goal was essentially to set just a hard budget of what uh, you all might be um, comfortable uh, spending for the forestry operation. Um, and essentially what we were able to do was get a uh, flat rate for uh, stand B. Let me put this up for you all so you can see. Um, so a flat rate uh, for this section here of $10,000 um, to clear that and then uh, by the acre rate for these two sections. Um, these were identified by the city's urban forester uh, with, with the, the goal in mind of still being able to, to see where the sites are but not have to clear the whole area. Um, and the Hearst Landworks came back with a $2,000 per acre um, price point for that. So, um, you know, our our recommendation is to, to set a $25,000 budget for this project, um, which would allow for uh, the clearing of this, this full area identified here, um, and then about $2,000 worth of contingency. 
Do we have any idea of the expense of ongoing maintenance of the cleared areas? Um, yeah, it, it should be around $1,000 an acre um, annually. And we would budget that. You already have some money budgeted for the industrial park. Correct. Just for maintenance. I think it's 25000 I was going to look it up real quick, but I don't want to change Clayton's slide. Um, but normally that's what I put in there because we change signs out when people need it. And, you know, just to have something there, there's a, you know, the uh, – BWXT, they have, you know, that 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 was all done very sustainably. So there were tension pond, you know, ponds. We did the parking lot and all that. Sometimes all that has to be cleaned out. So I just I leave that money in there. So I just I just want to say that the the urban forester, the uh, Nick that worked with Clayton on all this just did a fabulous job. Um, he actually walked the entire site marked it and walked the entire so he can tell you every tree not i'm not kidding you he's 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 designated to un and you know um popular and he got the two tree it's a lot of scrub so that's another reason why you know the amount of money we thought it was gonna we were gonna break even on it but it's a lot of scrub back there so um he did a fabulous job it will allow us to take like a four wheel drive vehicle, you know, mm -hmm. so when we're showing it, we can at least, you know, get back around there. Okay. And we're also going to take the, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, but we're also going to neaten up 200 Jefferson correct. Ridge up the street so you can see <laughs> something's happening, you know, take it back just a little bit instead of clearing yeah. the whole thing. Because back to John's point, what you don't want to do is if you do the massive clearing there, then the maintenance cost until you get something going on there mm -hmm. um, can be more than you, you know, than you bargain for. And especially because of slope of some of that. So I think this was done, um, you know, normally when something comes on us like this, we've got we're like a house on fire. We've got to do something really quick. This was really well thought out. Uh, Clayton participated the whole time. Nick was very in there. And once again, we really tried to do and take this through the same process that a um, a business owner would have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't ask for it. We're not we never do. But we didn't ask for any. But we did everything. We're doing everything by the book. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, and we did. Margette, to your point on the on the budget for. Uh, FY24, uh, we have in your budget uh, 14800 for uh, industrial park, which is what Margette noted is, um, you know, replacing signs and, and general upkeep for the park. And then we also have $20,000 for site development set aside. Um, so this falls well within that, um, that total figure, 34800 And he would do this pretty soon. Yeah. Um, at this point, uh, essentially, once we have that that dollar figure, um, we can move forward with executing the contract through procurement. Um, and and the goal would be to be um, at this point. I think we're going to be pushed into January. Um, but yes, it would be a, a relatively quick operation. Well, no. It would be super eco conscious, but that's a good time of the year because mm -hmm. animals are not breeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, just a, a further note: the it it, it will be um, essentially mulch, but there because of uh, trying to work around uh, not getting super expensive and uh, the continued upkeep we're not clearing all trees so if they i believe it was over a uh, 10 inch diameter they're going to leave standing so it won't be a naked field um that requires a lot more upkeep it's it has a lot of healthy undergrowth that should uh, regenerate um this spring this coming spring uh, so there will be some there's not very many but a few standalone trees um, but it should open it up quite a bit to where you can see it from the road 
and like Marjet said, you can we we will be able to get down into it. And just for some perspective, you know, initially we thought that when we had somebody go in there and and mulch the whole thing, mm -hmm. that if they took out some trees that they could then resell, we thought we'd be close to break even. Mm -hmm. The initial bid came in something like one hundred and thirty thousand oh. dollars, or something like that. So property committee went back to the drawing board, and and that's where this came. Because uh -huh. so, wow. so much scrub in there, uh, Georgia, and so they weren't they weren't going to harvest much of anything. We thought they'd be able to harvest and that right. you know the selling of whatever they harvested right. over the lumber, but it didn't work out that way. So they went back to the drawing board. So this is a recommendation from the property, property. committee to you all. In this way, all quality trees remain mm -hmm. still be pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Any further questions? So it's a recommendation from property committee to approve twenty five thousand. Guess I don't need a motion. Since it's from property committee, we just need a vote, correct? Mm -hmm. So any further questions before we take a vote? All right, all in favor of approving 25,000 for forestry at Ivy Creek A and B, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. 25,000 is approved. Yeah. Good job, Clayton. Thanks, Thank Clayton. you. Thank you all. All right, number five, staff report. Um, and just a little update for you all. So Ted and I are working on the bylaws. And just so everybody knows, the bylaws probably haven't been changed. Ted, you got a big old list at the top of them, I think, that tells you every year that they were changed. But the last time may have been for COVID, just to allow electronic meetings when the governor gives the order, that kind of thing. So what we're really focusing on, um, just because the, you know, it's written in legalese and when you're trying to look at it, to have the minute, have the bylaws reflect how we actually operate, because I don't want there to be any, you know, the secretary, the, the authority has Ted um, take the minutes for the meeting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The treasurer, the, the treasurer of the EDA, we have uh, not only Keisha provides uh, his staff to mm -hmm. the um uh, on the financial side, but you have Brown Edwards and you have uh, Davidson Doyle and Hilton who does the audit, right? Mm -hmm. So however that can be worded in there, that is what actually takes place and that is what has taken place since I have been here. So I think that needs to be reflected, you know, in the minutes so that you all don't panic and think you're, you're supposed to be doing something that you haven't done. Mm -hmm. Also, we don't have an executive committee that meets um, you and have one you, you yeah, you absolutely can have one if you want. But but I'm just saying, as you read through the minutes and don't, you, I mean, through the bylaws, these are the things that we're focusing on. We're focusing on things like the minutes have to be posted just like this meeting is posted mm -hmm. online. That should be in the bylaws. That that's that with a link. Keisha was saying that's where, um, you know. Uh, People could look at the bylaws and see that's where you go to um, to be able to to uh, find that. Um, and so those are the big things, right? And then the official seal. I I don't know where the official seal is. Do yeah. you have the yeah, official right. seal? We well use it when you have a contract with these. Right. Well, I just think that we need to say where, where that is because if you get new staff in here, it's not going to be here forever. So, yeah. It's a seal that you stamp on. We actually have one that you crimp. Almost like a notary. Yeah. So, we're going to work on that, bring those back. But I just, I, see, as, as you you're look at see, them, uh, the, the changes, changes there are in real. Yeah. So. And so, really, I just wanted you all to know that mm -hmm. my the goal for looking at, at all of this was number one, notice of, of meetings, right? Mm -hmm. And being in alignment with what the city does. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, 
uh, what it what is actually how the board functions, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that that is reflected um, in the bylaws so that there's not any question. Now I always like to make sure that I'm being cognizant. Ted, sure, Ted does too. Of you all's volunteer role here and the fact that how this all operates, you're depending on us mm -hmm. to make sure that you know what that is. But I want you to also, I want my goal is for your handbook that is online to reflect that you could go at any time without being buried. There's, mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of information, supporting information. However, that handbook's going to be laid out so that if you're responsible for it or, or touch it, it's going to be in there. And we're going to try to label where it is. We don't think we're too far off the mark right now, but okay. we'll let y'all be mm -hmm. the judge of that. But Keisha and I are working on, so you'll know what bonds you have. Mm -hmm. You'll know what uh, lease agreements you have. You'll know what initiatives fall under you, all of that kind of stuff. So that if you need to think about something or ask or just, you know, can't sleep, you can go in there and look that up. And you'll and then the handbook it will guide you and all that and then you can come back to us and like I said we you know once this um, these sites A and B and all of that mm -hmm. get uh, done um, Clayton has have um, and this might be too hard to do but that um, video have y'all seen the video that Jonathan Parker did for uh, Ivy Creek. Yeah, lost property. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good job. All right. Well, it's just amazing, yeah. right, to see a um, an industrial park that's that 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 is not doctored up. That is the way it yeah. looks, and it's just beautiful, right? And but they also were able to put buildings, you know, um, in there, you know, mock up buildings in there and everything. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's the real deal with what we send out or what goes to VDP for people to look at you know what what we are what we are doing there so we will also you know when that happens we'll go down you know go down to the park and take you many of you haven't even been to where there you know we own the property and what we'll go you go to work there every day but yeah and your gate goes to work in the other one um but just you know just to see you know all of that because the the history of the ADA in in Lynchburg is is pretty astounding. And as I drive around and look at the businesses that are here, mm -hmm. um, whether they have a home office somewhere else or they their home office is here, like Zach and Georgia, you know, the ADA has had their hand on on almost all of that, mm -hmm. right? In a yeah, in a very quiet way or something, they have either helped or done done something there. So it is it is very important uh, work that you all do and keeping focused on what the charge is, even in the midst of, you know, political turmoil. So once again, you are greatly appreciated. OK, let me get to this back before. Okay, so we've we've submitted CIP. Um, the budgets are all due on December the fifth. We've been told to submit a flat budget, and we are um, uh, working on uh, on that. Um, we are also uh, to Clayton and Stephen Pedigo, and really all of us are continuing to work on the OEDT business development plan, like a full plan there that shows business retention and expansion, visitation efforts, as well as prospecting efforts and all that to be captured um, in one document. So we continue to work that. Clayton just finished um, OU, it's Oklahoma University Economic Development Institute training. He did the Real estate and what else, Clayton? Uh, credit analysis. Yeah, credit analysis. Um, so that's a really great program. Um, the International Economic Development Council does classes, you know, for a certificate, but they're one-off classes. Whereas OUEDI has been around for a really long time, and they do they they bundle up like two or three. And I think that's always you know good because you're. Mm -hmm. 
you're able to sit in there and, and that I hope Clayton feels, feels the same way. Um, you're able to sit in there and really immerse yourself in it during, you know, during that um, that time period. So Clayton is is fresh back from there and and teleworking. Um, so we are rolling along. Keisha is a saint. Um, we have two grants with uh, VDP and D and uh, Go Virginia. And um, Clayton and Keisha are on top of that in terms of remitting for reimbursement on those grants. So those grants are probably, they're at least 50 and 60% finished. Um, and what we did was we, we, we went and looked at where we were on all of that. The due diligence that's being done here will inform the CIP request, right? Um, the airport is a whole, you know, course of a different color, but the Abbey Creek, right, if you all had to do all the work that was going to be required for those sites, you would have no money left. So the city has to be involved if they want um, prospects in, in new business there, so, sure. or the expansion of business. So this, the work that is being done here with those grants will inform a truer picture of what the ask needs to be for from an infrastructure perspective. And I think I've said to you all many times that I am really looking for the sites A and B in Abbey Creek and even uh, up the street 200 Jefferson Ridge is really to get infrastructure, you know, to get access to it and the utilities, right? Because the, the amount of grading that you know is needed will really be dependent upon who the prospect is and and what all that looks like. So, I have put this uh, both projects in CIP, up updated them with the information that I have thus far, um, and and they're out over a five year period. So um, that's been done. Um, Andrew is at, on the tourism side, and I really hope that as we go along, even though you all are really focused, you know, on the economic development and and development uh, side of the house, that the tourism side of the house is incredibly important. It's not only important for the talent um, side of it, but just balancing out. Um, and and all those trust taxes um, that that the city has, sales, meals, amusement, and lodging tax, mm -hmm. it it just really from an economic vitality standpoint, it it's it, it balances things out, and it's pretty incredible. And the dollars spent in the tourism space are good for the residents, good for the talent, and good for bringing uh, visitors that hopefully might live move, choose to move here. Or, or to work here. So Andrew has been out there. Um, the, the the sheer number of leads that that he goes out there and talks with is just will uh, blow your mind. And we are really really fortunate in this in this office to have built relationships with consultants that love what they do so much that they always give us more than we pay for. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a true mark of a person that just can't help themselves because of what they do. Stephen is like that. He has given us unbelievable amount of access um, to things over um, time. Plus, he is um, he is really working with Emily and uh, Clayton, like kind of one on one, mentoring them and walking through things because he has just that broad um, scope of mm -hmm. what's going going on in in uh, economic development as well as in communications or in the um, in the tourism space. So we have the same thing on the tourism side of the house. We have a, a guy named John Schmieder who did our sports tourism uh, plan. And he's rebooting that right now. But I mean, he I mean, you know, he gives me more every time I talk to him. So we've also brought on a group called Airstream Ventures. And they actually deepened the bench for um, um, Andrew. They're out there talking to all kinds of events, trying to bring events. Not only, you know, do we look at Liberty, but we're also looking at University of Lynchburg and Randolph. 
because bringing events to their campus does the same thing it does for Liberty, brings students on site mm -hmm. there, but it also can uh, get their facilities rented. So I really believe I've gotten their, I've gotten the president's attention at the colleges. Um, Airstream Ventures, the president there, Alan Verlander, um, I met with him just earlier this week at the Virginia Tourism um, Conference, and uh, he it happens to be best friends or really good friends with the athletic director at Liberty. Um, and it's, so that's just a great relationship there, but they have, um, they're out there looking at all kinds of events to bring here. So, you know, we are just trying to train our, our partners here of the benefit of these, you know, of these kinds of things. So John Schmieder with Huddle Up Group had a group that, um, and y'all, you know, I'm learning all this too, but, it, you know, sports teams, especially collegiate sports teams, are they have a transfer portal. That means when somebody is, you know, maybe going to a smaller school and they've knocked the cover off the ball, no pun intended, and they decide to transfer somewhere else, you got to you jump in that portal mighty quick to sell yourself as a college. So uh, John Schmieder came into, um, uh, became knowledgeable of a group that like Duke and some of these folks like this are, are using, um, they, they send uh, prospects uh, an Oculus, and let them see what is happening on the field. I mean, you're like, it's virtual reality. So, I mean, all the kids have that, but I'm being told this. They all have this anyway, right? And so they pick this thing up from the college and they're in the locker room at Duke or they're on the field or they are on the basketball court. We, we they sent us an Oculus and we, and we put, I didn't even get seasick. It was really kind of amazing. Um, but it like puts you right there on the field. Like you're really trying to sell your school or do whatever it is. First of all, you sent them a cool thing. So like your clothes being four years old, you've sent them something that you're of this century, That's right? Important century, not everybody but they'll know you're thrifty oh, yeah. and they'll know you're, yeah. So, um, I'm so sorry, but it is really a very cool yeah, thing. So, so John has, uh, you know, John has worked out a day. He said, I, he went, I'm not the only person in the world that will really understand what a tool this could be, right? So, um, I just really appreciate that we might get an opportunity to do all of our, uh, um, you know, uh, facilities and things here for as a test run for a real deal and be way ahead of the game. Like it, we would have a YouTube link if you didn't have the Oculus, but we would, you would feel like you were there. That's, I don't know if y'all are following, but I mean, Liberty is on fire. There is going to be, uh, you know, a it's definitely a bowl game in their future and um, and no telling what might come here. So we got to be ready to move at a moment's <laughs> notice to, to, to capture all that. So just want to always keep you all aware because it is so integrated into what we do on the on the uh, economic development side is the is the um, is the tourism side. So, Andrew, that's why I'm putting these figures in here for you all on that. Um, we're going to talk about in the finance committee, the MOMS grant that was given to us to use with 400 12th Street project. Um, we have, once again, once you open the door, we've turned right around and responded. Clayton responded while he was gone to yet another prospect for sites A and B. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still in the running, uh, for that one. I am working with the, um, the, the city attorney and another group to redefine the floodplain down there where the uh, on Concord Turnpike to try to help the some of the buildings down there. I'm also working on um, battery siting agreement for when these energy groups come in and want to, you know, put some kind of battery storage unit there, meaning helping us to understand what the ramifications of that are yeah. and how we need to approach it. Um, from the the front side, on the front end, not not running behind it after the fact. So, Emily has put down here, and she's doing a fantastic job. Uh, all the noteworthy news stories and things that mm -hmm. we have had there, and 
that is all I have. Wonderful. Anybody comments, questions? Can I ask um, the capital improvement program budget is submitted to who? Like winter or just council? Yeah, winter. Winter. It'll be winter's budget, and they're two separate. They're they're when when we go to council, capital improvement goes separately from the general um, budget. You know, and so all the capital improvement projects. It was really interesting. We had a meeting yesterday when Donna told us what the total was of the capital improvement projects that were submitted. It had a B in it. Oh my God. Over a five year period, right? But that just goes to show you. But I'm sorry, who B. 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 Yeah. Really? Uh huh. Well, isn't that the thing that fell on its sword last budget cycle about? Because they vote on the amount for the next whatever every year, right? Yes. And so we really, you know, we hmm. we, but it's we call it capital improvement but mm -hmm. the budget, but it a lot of times it just, but you know, for a city as old as we are, it ends up being maintenance. Right. And then, as you all know, we before two years ago when Reed was here, we'd never been in the CIP. I mean, I have during my tenure, I'm sure many did. Like, there might have been something in there before, mm -hmm. but as far as Planning for your future, we had not. Oh, that, we had not that helps been. me. I mean, I didn't. I, I didn't know. Did, did, does it even? Do we even look at? It? Yeah, you can't. So I mean, yeah. but you it's could, not. But we don't as a group. Right. Yeah. Okay. As a citizen. I think so. As a citizen. And he he asked for it to be flat. He asked for our general operating budget to be flat, not the CIP. Okay. Meaning, when we turn in personnel and everything for okay. the city, um, everybody, that's pretty much how they, the budgets here are either. And then you, you know, you advocate for what you need, right? Okay. right? So, um, he. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's doing some advocating. Um, but just for something entirely different. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you could tell me what you'll probably find a way. Advocate I'm going to. I just feel like it's time. You know what I mean? Like I'm not getting any younger and I'm gonna win one for the gift for you. Uh anyway, thank y'all. Thank you. Much. Thank you. So we do have reason for closed sessions. Yes, we do. So for acquisition of real property and prospective business, correct? Yes, sir. Somebody needs to make a motion. I'd love to make that motion. Uh, I'll so second. There was any motion to consider the acquisition of real property for public purpose or the disposition of publicly owned real property where discussion in an open meeting can address that fact of bargaining position <clears> of <throat> negotiating strategy of the authority. Pursuant to 2.23711A3 and a prospective business or industry for the expansion thereof when no previous announcement has been made. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We are in closed session. Virginia Law for discuss in closed meeting for which uh, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. I'll make that motion. I'll All in favor of said motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay. Do we have any other business before we adjourn? Finance committee is next. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.